Well, now is the time to take stock in ourselves and see where in the hell we want to go. Your future is in your own hands to go all the way to the championship. Not like you did last week. We know that. I got called into Bill Walsh's uh, office once because I'm thinking I had a game where I had over 10 receptions. I think I had three touchdowns. And I'm thinking Bill is bringing me up to uh, congratulate me. But Bill brought me up to tell me that, look, I need more from you on the football field. And come to find out, he had brought up Ronnie Lott and so many of the other players also. He was that type of motivator. Some guys can take on that competition and thrive on it. Other guys can cave in. To me, football is an art form. It's a science, but it's an art form. Because of the rules, there are unlimited possibilities. Now here's 20 halfback reads. Go red right, which is split backs, 20 halfback reads. So John Taylor's got a comeback that we could turn into a go. The back, he's got a read route, so he's got a five to six yard hook, which could turn into a cross, which could turn into an out, which could turn into an arrow. The tight end, he had a 12 to 14 yard hook, which man to man adjusts to a cross. Jerry had a post hook read on the backside. No safety in the middle, he goes to the post. <laughs> and the fullback was checking, blocking first, and then slow flat on the right. You had a progression, and you know, we went to the back. First was hot, he was hot. If they got a blitz from that side, it was half back to the comeback to the inside. And uh, no safety, forget it, just throw the boats. It was so much fun to kind of reel him in. It was like a fishing expedition, right? You draw him in and just enough, and then you just whip back and throw it right down the rail to Jerry. And that was what was fun about playing uh, in the West Coast, because you were very tactical, and you really did pick on people. The pass offense was high percentage timed passing. So you're here, you're here, five step drop. That's what really gave us an edge over our opposition. Tell Freddie to split about six or seven yards on this thing, and then get his up that field, and you watch that safety, okay? We also learned to strive for what Bill liked to say was perfection, because if we miss perfection, we're pretty good, but if you aim to be just so-so or be good and you miss, you end up being mediocre and, and you don't last very long in the NFL being mediocre. How did that hitch feel to you? Uh, it seemed late, because usually I'm bought, just leave my hand as they're turning. We'd have a script of plays for the whole practice and he goes, there's 90 plays. We could be here an hour and 45 minutes, or we could be here 2.45, but we're not leaving until we get it right. That will be a beauty. The other thing that's important, I think, is, is the demeanor. Don't try to attract attention by sorry-looking clothes. Don't think just because you dress up like the pilot, they'll let you steer the plane. <laughs> we're going to the Super Bowl, and well, we were getting off the bus. Uh, we just got to the hotel. I wasn't paying attention. I was trying to get my eyes on the door and try to walk in as fast as you can go. And I had a, I had a carry-on bag in my arm. I passed this guy who was wearing a, a bellman suit and a cap and all that kind of stuff and hadn't uh, registered on me. And as I got off the bus, somebody grabbed my bag and I go, no, 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 it's okay, I got it. And I wasn't really paying attention. But then he grabbed it the second time and yanked hard. I said, no, I got it. And I turned and looked and it was Bill. We really didn't know who he was until we really looked at his face. It was part of his way of relaxing the football team and getting us ready to play the ball game. You might tell Joe Montana and the fellas, I think maybe they really did win one for the Gipper. Well, I think uh, Joe was thinking of the Gipper when he won that one, I'll tell you. And I was hoping I'd be receiving a call from you, and thank you very, very much. You're going to have to find a way to avoid being distracted by all the great things about being a professional athlete. They can get so distracted by it, they forget <clears throat> why they're earning the money, and that's to play football and be part of a football team. After the first Super Bowl, everybody was all of a sudden wanted all over the place. And he called me in one day and just, he thought I was doing way too much off the field, and he was right. And he just said, look, I just want to tell you something. Your job is to play football here, and I understand all this, these things, the new things that are going on. He says, but I just want to tell you one thing, and that is, the less people see you, the
the more they want you. And that sticks in my mind till this day. Keep interviews short. After five minutes, you're starting to get in trouble. After 10 minutes, your wife's going to hear about it. After 20 minutes, your teammates, some crazy things you end up saying. Keep your interview short, cover things, and get out of there keeping yourself satisfied and them satisfied. Bill was very complex. He was very, very competitive. Football was always with the stick. Every coach is just a big, heavy stick and just pounded people. And Bill had the greatest carrot. He had a stick, but he had a carrot. And he had a way of doing it that changed the way that players are dealt with. He understood that we had young people in our locker room making half a million dollars, $750,000 a year, and who had never had a checking account. In 1985, he invited me to lunch up at Rockland. He wanted to discuss issues involving uh, player personnel, particularly uh, college uh, degree completion, post-career occupational preparation, uh, finance taxes, and investment uh, counseling. He was a very cerebral coach, and he wanted his team to be very cerebral. We were a reflection of him, just like kids are a reflection of their parents. We talk a lot about the chemistry of this ball club. I mean, we have super rapport between players, all positions, all age group, experience, non-experience, everything. Super rapport. He was also very much interested in bringing in minority coaches who would be partners in managing what was essentially a new and evolving demographic in the locker room on the field. Bill was always the one that wanted to integrate teams, and people think integration, they think racially. He integrated everything, you know, whether it was religion or socioeconomic background or geography or language. You know, all the things that put people in, in groups, he wanted to break down because what he knew is if the quarterbacks knew something about the defensive backs and knew their wives' names or knew where they were from, that that team would, under pressure, perform better. Every racial group, Every economic group, different educational backgrounds, different ages. Somehow, the sport of football brings everybody together. But getting called to Bill's office um, wasn't always a good thing. <laughs> it's like getting called to the principal's office. <laughs> Luckily for me, I didn't have very many trips there. He caught us sneaking out after curfew, and he fined us a thousand bucks each. So we decided to send him Monopoly money to pay the fine. He thought that was fairly clever, so he accepted it. He didn't make us pay, thank goodness. A thousand bucks was a lot to me in 1980. Bill was somewhere between a dad and a big brother. He would, uh, if he saw you kind of going down the wrong road, he'd call you in and say, you know, let's straighten that up. In Paul Seals and Ken McAfee, we have two of the biggest, dumbest, slowest tight ends in the National Football League. All right, now the next thing we've got, a little more of a passing situation, is a sprint right option. We're going to call a sprint option. This was a Paul Brown play from the early 50s. Sprint right option means that the quarterback is going to sprint. So in contrast, a straight back in the pocket, he's going to sprint to the right, or he could sprint to the left. So the option phase, one is quick throw to the flat, two is to run. First and goal, split backs. On his hip, Montana to the end zone. Touchdown, 49ers. He brings it in himself. Three is to read the quarter of the end zone. Bill went to it for the catch play. Throwing in the end zone. Oh, it. That was the fulfillment of three years of hard work of running that play thousands of times in practice. Let's go sprint right open. 324, look double pitch. What's that? Let's go red right, F left. Sprint left option on one. Ready? Square it up, Jerry. People that were exposed to that play through the 49er system. Now it's taking that play, and I'm sure we have it. Uh, Philadelphia has it. Kansas City has it. You know, a number of teams have it. Mike Holmgren had taken what he learned from Bill Walsh and the 49ers and just essentially just placed it in Green Bay. Three minutes left, and Brett Favre, of course, pulls the magic out and throws the same play that Joe Montana had thrown for the catch. You know, for us, it's like, you've got to be kidding me. You know, sprint right option, come on. And that's our play. <laughs> We begin to lose people, and those that replaced them have the conviction that they can play as well or better if ever called upon. Bill Walsh is the kind of guy that could, could, could grab 
talent from people. I was out of football at age 28, and I sent out all my resumes to all the teams in the league, and everybody said I was too old except for one. That was Bill Walsh. Give it to Sydney. It was incredible playing for the 49ers. Touchdown, 49ers. This is going to take the sacrifice of sacrifices to make or break the season this week. We'll have an excellent game plan. I think we're in pretty good shape there. But you, in your heart, have to get on that plane ready to make the sacrifice of all sacrifices. We have to keep our poise and function under pressure. When we take that field, it's just like Marvin Hagler. The minute you take that field, we unload. He used to talk about he was a boxer at San Jose State. And he would always say, you know, you have to beat your opponent to the punch. You have to hit them before they're ready to be hit. If you watch a boxing match, it's, it's not all about the knockout. It's about what boxer is hitting the other boxer first and wearing him down. And that's the philosophy that he brought to football, was to be hitting the opponent every time before they were hitting you. As soon as you slow down, now you're playing their game. It's like letting the big heavyweight get your corner. The biggest man or the strongest man. It wasn't about that. It was about the complexity of the game, but it was about the poise. It was about making the right decisions at the right time and about outthinking your opponent. He was in control of everything, but he was very comfortable uh, letting folks do their job. So on the defensive side of the ball, he had a lot of trust in uh, Chuck Studley. Chuck Studley was the defensive coordinator. When it came to Bill Walsh being a part of the defense, you didn't see him a lot, but you also knew that, man, his fingerprints were on it. If there was a mistake, or if I was out of position, or if Keena was out of position, or if Willie Harper was out of position, or if Hacksaw didn't get something done, Chuck Stully and that group, they would get berated. At the end of the day, uh, Bill was in control. You can always talk about things, and I should do them. And to get them done quickly, there's no use to spend time with dialogue. That's where everybody makes mistakes in this world. So if we say we're going to hit people before they can hit us, we better do it in all games. In this game, it wasn't. It didn't show up once in the whole game. I can't. I don't think it showed up once. Each guy in the room's got a role to play in the game. It might be goal line defense. It might be punt coverage. It might be special blitz. Whatever the hell it is, figure your job's the key job this week. Whatever you do is the critical job this week. The game's up to you personally. There's ever been 50 against the world. This is it. The uh, owner there is. Uh, Philadelphia's guaranteed a victory for his team, and so it should turn into an interesting contest. He really knew how to get the best out of you. I mean, it might go, he might go for the juggler, or he may be patting you on the fanny. He's just probably the brightest person that I ever worked with for in terms of tactics. We were too young and dumb, I think, to, to understand it. But he had a very good knack of keeping all the teams balanced. If anybody had a great week before and you were feeling a little bit cocky, he'd tear it apart. The thing that worries the hell out of me is that Ed's not being there. If we're looking for guys that catch every damn ball. If somebody had a bad week, he'd come in and build you up. She's a little bit out there. I just sensed a feeling on that field. Just so damn positive, so confident. You just break the seal really well. He was extremely demanding, but we were part of building something that was special. When someone talks about Bill, there's a love and then there's, a, there's an edge to it, like, ah. Bill had this look that I, I can't explain it and, and only pictures can show it, but he had a look with a little tilt of his head and his hands were, arms were crossed. When you saw that look, I'd just exit as far down the bench as I could and I'd go to the phone and get to the quarterback coach up in the booth first and then he, right before we'd hang up, he goes, oh, so Bill wants to see you. And I go, oh, yeah, I figured that. <laughs> They got the best of both of us. I mean, really. Um, and so maybe that was Bill's genius. This damn Dallas team can't keep their mouth shut. This is a grudge game for them. And you never play the real Dallas team, as you know. Every time you beat them, it's because somebody was missing, because the plane didn't have the proper food on it, whatever, the, the accommodations weren't right. Something, some reason, they lost the game other than getting their ass kicked. What he brought to the game was just amazing. A lot of character, a lot of heart. Players wanted to always go out there and play for him. Bill was a genius. Bill was a great coach, but more importantly to us, a great human being. We never wanted to let him down, and I think that's why we had so much success on the field. Brilliant, innovative, dear friend, family man, one of the great, great 
motivators. His coaching tree goes on and on and on, all through the NFL. His legacy will go on forever.